Good people YouTube, I'm the watch idiot, and this video is a long time coming because I've now had the Alpinus GMT for one year, which is crazy to think about, but that's given me time to see what I love about the watch and what I don't love about the watch. So in this video, I'm gonna get into the details of my three loves and two hates of this watch because this is an awesome watch that could have been exceptional if not for a couple things that bother me more now than I was expecting during my honeymoon phase. And also as promised, I'll be announcing the winner of my 20K subscriber watch giveaway in this video. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, let's just get into it. First love is that the Alpinus GMT is an evolved Alpinus, which is important to me because for me, the Alpinus is and forever will be the Sarvo 17, and it holds that spot because basically every single element on it means Alpinist. Altogether, the green dowel with the gilt cathedral hands, the gilt 12, 2, 4, 6, 8 layout, the 430 crown, the inner rotating compass, and the spectacular case all make the Alpinist the alpinist the problem i've run into is that any slight keyword slight variation to that formula just doesn't work for me i got the very first blue dial alpinist thinking that blue dial plus silver hands and indices makes it even more versatile but in real life it just felt wrong it didn't feel like an alpinist so i ended up selling it so naturally i was worried that i would run into the same problem with the alpinist gmt but it didn't happen because it's different enough overall that it feels like a new watch, but with the best of the Alpinist. Main thing is that the dial doesn't have the same layout. It's got the 12369 layout, which gives the watch a different feel. Some would say a more explorer feel, but on top of that, it's got an entirely new design addition, the GMT hand, which further changes the feel. But it does have that same beautifully flowy mid case that I love so much and the 430 crown, both iconic alpinist design cues but things change up with the brush 24 hour bezel so altogether this still feels like an alpinist while not being just an alpinist with the gmt hand stuck on it just the right level of evolution so in the same vein my next love is the dial as a whole because seiko got a lot of things right here starting off with the gloss black dial i love gloss black dials because they end up looking truly jet black in a way that a matte black dial can never achieve it's just so awesome to see the dial in different lights and seeing that the dial is just stays jet black and it's usually the darkest thing that's visible. My Zin 556 did it the best and man, I, I kind of want to rebuy it, but I know I shouldn't. Next up, I love the 12369 layout because it not only changes things up like I mentioned earlier, but it's just a very appealing and symmetrical layout that's looks fantastic. I'm glad that they kept the cathedral hands because they are a part of the Alpinist identity, but I also think that they designed the GMT hand perfectly. The arrow is curved and it follows the design of the tips of the minute and seconds hand and only the arrow tip is red, which makes it pop, but not overwhelm the rest of the handset. Finally, the most controversial thing on the dial will undoubtedly be the 430 day window. And I happen to love it because we get a full set of indices and we get a well-executed date window that fades into the background and the numbers are actually level, which is a very nice little touch. The aftermarket support for a watch is important, but I've never included that in any of the loves of any watch that I've reviewed. But here, it's important to mention because the strap that it comes on is... It's okay at best. I mean, not much more to it. I mean, the deploying class is nice, but I personally hate deploying class on straps. Can't stand it. Usually for most watches, that's the end of the story. Just wear it on a different strap. And me being a bracelet guy, that would have been a sad ending. But because of how popular the Alpinist is, the likes of Strap Code and Uncle Straps have a big selection of Alpinist bracelets. The Three Link Lincoln bracelet that I had on my Alpinus GMT in the original video was from Uncle Straps and it was made for the Sargo 17 and its variations, but it works perfectly for the Alpinus GMT as well. I also had a three link strap code oyster style bracelet for my green Alpinus, so I figured, you know, let's try it on. I mean, like, I've been wearing it now on my GMT for a while because I had it, so why not again? And I happen to think that it suits the GMT 
fantastically, really, really well. Oh, and actually, Uncle Straps just released a new version of his three-link bracelet, so I might be giving that because it has a bit more of a taper, which sounds very good to me. I mean, there's just so many options. You can find the style that suits you the best, and this isn't something that commonly happens with new watches, at least this quickly, but I am glad that we have the options. And going on with the aftermarket, this thing is an absolute strap monster with 20 millimeter lugs and a black dial. So you're all set with straps. I mean, I've worn it on rubber straps, NATO's leather straps. I mean, it just works with everything in a way that very few other watches can achieve. I mean. The Speedmaster is the only watch that can really top this off the top of my head in terms of strap monster ability, as I call it. So before we get into the first dislike, it's time to reveal the winner of the Titanium Citizen Zenshin. And a drum roll. The winner is... Here. I mean, sorry. I'm recording this a little bit earlier, so I don't know who won yet, but still, congratulations big time to the winner. I'm really excited for you to get this watch. I'm, I'm serious because it's, it's such a good watch. But anyway, the first dislike is the crystal, and this might be a me thing because it's something that has bothered me pretty much from the start. Other than a few exceptions, I don't like dome crystals. I get the appeal, but they too often get in the way of seeing the dial clearly, which to me is just idiotic because so much work is put into the dial design of a watch only for the dome crystal to just reflect the entire world behind me right on the dial of the watch. So not only can I not get a clear uninterrupted look at the dial, but the reflections often actively hinder legibility, which I find just so counterproductive. This problem is ever present with the Alpinist GMT because Seiko decided to put in a domed sapphire crystal. So it's nearly impossible to experience all that inky jet black goodness without something reflecting off the crystal. And this for sure doesn't help the legibility issues due to the darker indices that I'll talk about next. And also just the most irritating thing about all this is that it's a single domed crystal and you can tell because of the distortions at steeper angles. But this means that the underside is flat, which means that Seiko didn't dome the crystal because they needed more height for the GMT hand. They did it just because there's no literally no reason why they did it other than just wanting to do it. And that makes matters worse because the dome is just so subtle that they might as well have just put in a flat crystal solved these issues and claimed a thinner watch. I mean, this could have had near Zen 556i levels of contrast and inky blackness if it just had a flat crystal. And that makes me very sad to think that it was just so close to being full inky. I mean, Seiko just isn't getting the best of either world here. I mean, it's, it's not really a full dome. The legibility has been hindered. The watch is also technically thicker because of that subtle dome, which is, ugh, anyway, anyway, Rant over. <laughs> and now for the final dislike that I alluded to in the last section, and that's the finish of the indices, which I think could have been a bit brighter, actually. Reason being is that I'm not in bright lights or outside in the sun all the time where the indices look just fine. When I'm inside or if it's just darker outside, the indices edge towards being almost illegible because the indices are painted just a bit too dark. They definitely look darker than the brushed steel of the case, which is slightly off-putting to me, especially because they could have just kept the same finish, but just made the finish brighter to make it more legible all the time. And given that the indices are three-dimensional, more contrast could have accentuated the 3D-ness, which is always gonna be a huge plus point for me. Very unusual choice from Seiko to do this, considering how easy the fix is, and they could have just color match the steel case or even the hands. Again, this just might be a, a me thing, but let me know down in the comments if anyone else feels this way. And also, there you have it. Let me know what you think about the watch as a whole in general, and until the next video, good day.